Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. 10 out of Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all like y'all rocking with me. Check it out, right? I feel like I didn't get into detail enough about this aspect of prison. You know, I told my story on Lockdown 23 and 1 about how I was arrested, county, prison, and then really just dove into it. I wasn't able to give full details on certain little things. One thing that I want to focus on, especially for this video, is Florida State Prison Reception. The reception centers, the very first taste of prison you get when you get to prison. This is the very first thing you're going to go through. It's like county jail booking, but on steroids. It's a whole nother ball game. Before we jump into it, though, I want to jump back into county jail. You know what I'm saying? I want to give you all the build up to before I actually went to prison. At this time, I was in confinement, right? Got on the phone. I heard someone was snitching, made a call, told that man to go handle that, you know, around like midnight, one o'clock, whatever. The sheriff's department came into the dorm. They had the sheriff outfits, they had chains, chained me up and took me to confinement under investigation, right? I asked the CEO what's going on. CEO tells me, oh, you was on the phone. Or not CEO, you know, they're like sheriff officers or whatever in the county, but it is what it is. Once you go to prison, they're all CEOs now, you know what I'm saying? But, um, so yeah, I'm under investigation for this right here, for the little phone call or whatever. During this time in confinement, this was my first time being in confinement in jail. You know what I'm saying? This is my very first experience with confinement. I was put into a big ass cell. I ain't even gonna lie. This was probably the biggest cell that I've ever been in out of any cell that I've been in. It's huge. The county jail cells are huge. And it's by yourself. It's not like prison. When you go to prison and you go to confinement, you're going to have a bunkie. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be top and bottom. When you get put into this cell, the door shuts and in front of you, just straight out in front of you, there's a slab that comes out, you know, the floor, the concrete. And that's where you sleep. And then to your right, you got the toilet that got a sink built into it. That's your thing. That's your handle your business, whatever. And you got just this huge floor of space, you know what I'm saying? Just mad space. There's an echo and everything. Now they keep the AC so loud inside of the county confinement, you can't yell out your door and talk to people. You know what I mean? It's pointless. No one's gonna hear you. You're just not able to. But when they let you out for a shower, it's like 30 to 30 minutes to an hour they let you out for. I forget which one. But basically they'll pop your cell, let you out, shut your cell. I was on the top tier, so I walked down to the bottom. There's a kiosk machine that you can use. There's a bookshelf. And then, of course, there's a shower. So, boom, I bang out the shower first, come back out, check my little kiosk. See, you know, I forget really what you can see on the kiosk. I think it's just like new charges and shit because you don't have access to your canteen and all that. The only way you get canteen and confinement is if somebody sends you canteen. But, um, and I didn't know that until I actually got a package one day. Canteen man came to my door. He told me to sign some slip. I signed the slip. That man put like $50 or $100 worth of canteen in my cell. And I'm by myself. So you know I'm in here smashing this shit, working out. And then another thing is you can have your radio in confinement. In county, I have my radio in there. I'm listening to Future and all that. This is when Future was sliding like 2012. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm vibing out. You know, in prison, you don't get radios, nothing. We don't have none of that. None of the compound. I heard other prisons and other states got TVs. Man, we don't get none of that, period. But boom, right? I'm in the cell. I was coming out for the shower. Somebody asked me to do him a favor. He was on the dough. He banged on it. I viewed him. What's up? You know what I'm saying? It's an older white dude. He got a beard, tatted up. He looked like a biker. Like he'd be on a Holly Davidson commercial, like some gangland shit for bikers, you know what I mean? But um, he asked me to grab him a book. I slid him the book and he shot me, you know, a soup. So I'm like, I bet, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I had to hide the soup under my towel because you're not supposed to communicate with any other cell when you're in confinement. If they see you in the bubble talking to another cell, you're automatically going back in your room. But me and dude was able to pull it off, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, he told me that he did like 15 years for a body when he was younger. He was like 18. He caught a body and he got out and, you know, he got into something again. I think he was saying something about his, his ex-wife or something. He got into it with her man, killed him or whatever. And that's why he was in the jail now. I don't think he told me he killed him. 
I think he more or less said like they got into it and he died. You know what I'm saying? And that's why he was in the jail or whatever. So I'm telling him why I'm in jail. You know what I'm saying? I got hit with a burglary and all these gun charges. Da 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 da. And I'm speaking like hypotheticals. Like hypothetically, if I'm found guilty, you think I'm gonna go to prison? He's like, I mean, yeah, most likely you'll get hit with something. Probably nothing greater than five or whatever. And um, you know, you're gonna go to the YOs. You're gonna go to the youth offender prisons. And he was telling me how the youth offender prisons are. So I'm like, damn. Like I hope I don't have to go through this. Like I'm still in that mindset. I could beat this case. I could get out. You know what I'm saying? I might not have to go to prison. I might be able to really beat this. I'm, I don't know if God's going to save me or who's going to save me. I don't know if some celebrity is just going to be like, you know what? Let me help somebody that needs it and pay for all his lawyer fees. I don't know. I was hoping that anything happened. You know what I'm saying? And um, it didn't work out that way. You know, I went to court from confinement. I took my three years. Now, when I got sentenced, when I went into court, mind you, I never had a visit in county, just like I never had a visit in prison. So out of the six, uh, I think it was six months that I did in the county jail, when I went to court, when I was sentenced for prison, that was my first time seeing my aunt and my grandmother in six months. You know what I'm saying? So... When I viewed them, I was so happy to see them. I wasn't necessarily paying attention to the sentencing. Now, they had previously offered me, I think it was like 48 months or something like that. I declined that. So this was the pretrial day. They came to me with a 36-month plea. You know what I'm saying? Plea out to 36 months. That's three years. So I'm like, I bet. So, you know, I'm looking at my auntie and my grandma, you feel me? I signed the paper. I got three years and my hands are cuffed up in front of me. So I'm looking at her and I'm like, I got three. I don't know if they thought I was trying to throw bees up or something, but I'm like, three, three. I got three because I obviously can't be loud. So she's looking and she's like, three? I'm like, yeah, I got three. So she's like, okay, love you. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm just smiling the whole time. Happy as hell to see them. I'm taking three. It is what it is. And you know what? I don't regret being happy because I didn't know that that was going to be the last time I saw them really for the next three years. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know I wasn't going to get a visitation or that I wouldn't want a visitation until I went to prison. You know what I'm saying? So I don't regret smiling in the courtroom and being happy when I took my three. You know what I mean? Because I had different feelings about it. Like, you know what? I stood on mine. I didn't tell on nobody. You know what I'm saying? I got told on. I didn't tell on nobody. I'm taking mine to the chin and I'm going to go do my time and I'm happy to see my people. And I had went back to county, you know what I'm saying? And talked to the old guy and told him I got sentenced. You know what I mean? And I never found out what happened to him. I don't know if he ended up getting found guilty of that murder or what really happened with that. But when I came back from court, I got to see someone else that I was in one of the county jail dorms with, you know, coming back from medical who was in confinement. And he was in a different like little holding cell than me. So we're sign languaging and I'm telling him, you know, I got three. So he writes back, I got and I read that, and you know, I'm just like, wait, you got five? He said, no, I got 35. And I'm just looking like, damn, bro, you got hit with 35. And I just, you know what I'm saying? That's all I could do. You know, I learned that in jail, like just doing that as a sign of like, you know, respect. But at that moment, it was more so I feel for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know what to say, but damn, you know what I'm saying? And he was the, he was a black dude. He was like 29, maybe 30, crazy talented at basketball. And he was a rapper, you know what I'm saying? But he was a cool ass dude. And um, 
I didn't expect him to get hit with time like that. You know, he got caught with some assault rifles, like crazy assault rifles. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was crazy, you know? Because when you're in county, you're not used to hearing about numbers like this. Like when you hit county and you meet people and you get cool with them, and then they come back from court and they tell you like, yo, bro, I just got bammed. Nah, how much time you get, bro? What you got, like three years, five years? Nah, bro, I got 55, bro. And you just like, what? Because not everyone's going to tell you they're charged. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody's going to be like, oh, I'm fighting a body. Oh, I busted at somebody. Oh, I shot at a police officer. Oh, I did this, I did that. They're not going to tell you all that. So you don't really know how much time to expect from somebody until they come back and tell you what they got hit with. You know what I'm saying? But more or less, after that had happened, I reached out to the captain. The captain did her round. And I asked her, I said, yo, Cap, I got sentenced to three years. I'm under investigation. Can I get out of confinement? So she actually looked at why I was in confinement, approved it, and let me back into a county dorm. You know what I mean? And this was my last dorm. I was only there for like two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Once you get sentenced, you'll sit for like two weeks and then they come get you. But while I'm in this dorm, there's two older white guys and they're basically schooling me on like what to expect from the YOs. You know what I'm saying? Like TOHs and getting beat up by the, by the COs and everything you know what i'm saying and that's how i met this kid named duels from tampa the same one that fired up brando you know what i mean and when i met duels duels was all about it he was like man i ain't worried about no toh i ain't worried about nobody trying me da 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 i'm from tampa this that and the third right and the older white dudes was like yeah y'all gotta stick together because y'all from tampa see it was never a race thing it was just we both from tampa that's all it was. So we were supposed to stick together. So, you know, it was probably like midnight when they came in. And they used to do this on certain days. I forget what day it was, but CEO will come in with a paper. They'll call names. And whoever's name gets called, you know you're going to prison. So they called my name. You know what I'm saying? And I grabbed my stuff. I dapped up some people. I gave someone my radio and that was it. I go up. I'm on my way to prison. So at this time, they take you to a part of the jail and you basically just sit around for a couple of hours. You know what I mean? An older blood homie that I had met in one of the first dorms that I was in, I met him again and we actually got sent to prison together. Big shout out to Jay Book. But um, yeah, like we just sitting around and we know we going to prison. You know what I'm saying? And I've never been to prison before. Boog been to prison before, you know what I'm saying? I think he was actually in the feds. He wasn't in the state. And then there was some other young one that was in the YOs, and he only been out like a year. So he's telling me how the YOs are, just telling me it's crazy. You got to be on point. You got to be ready. So, you know, whatever, whatever. We get all our stuff. They load us onto a bus. When we get on the bus, I sat all the way in the back. I was sitting with some older white guy. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know him or nothing like that. He caught the window. I sat closer to the inside. And man, we was on this bus for a minute. You know, we had to go from Tampa to Orlando, which is the reception for Central Florida, CFRC. It's in Orlando, Florida. I actually have a picture of it on my Instagram. But you know, he's telling me about prison while we're on the bus. He's just like, you know, when you get in there, you're going to be a YO. Keep your mouth shut, keep your ears open, keep your head down. Don't look the COs in their eyes. I'm just listening like, man, this man, you know what I'm saying? Like, you making it sound like we going to hell, you know what I mean? I'm not really believing it. And, you know, every the, the aura on the bus, the energy on the bus, it wasn't really serious. Everyone was just like vibed out, like, all right, we're just getting transferred. This ain't that big of a deal, you know what I mean? But when we actually, you know, got off the highway and the trees and the empty fields, we started seeing, you know what I'm saying, like prison guard vans and we just start seeing, you know, fences and this and that. We saw the sign. The whole energy on the bus flipped. Everybody got dead quiet. Everyone's just silent. You know what I'm saying? And. I don't know. It's like the energy was just sucked out of the bus. Like everyone, it made me think differently. I'm thinking, you know, I'm feeding off of their energy. Like, oh, this ain't that big of a deal. This ain't. But man, when we started pulling up, everything changed. 